Welcome back everyone to today's Destiny 2 video. Today's showcase we'll be covering 5 new lights and veteran builds for the hunters and showing you a viable but simple build without mods or certain perks that can be useful at a later date. One thing I've noticed on YouTube, social media and news outlets is the lack of new or returning builds that players who are getting into the game can quickly build up and use after a few days of sessions. There are a lot of in-depth in-game builds that players who have been with the game since day one can easily access and have fun with. But those that are new to the series and want to create a build for the first time are left without the option to do so, nor will they have the required equipment that are advertised these days. This is quite worrisome as not a lot of players will be able to get up to date with collecting specific mods or armour as the grind for items are all RNG, plus with how the introduction of Destiny goes, not many players will know where to start or even look for the necessary resources they need. So I've given myself the task of fixing that and showing you some easy and unique builds for all classes that you can create without the use of specific armor, mods or weaponry. I'll show you some builds that are simple to create that you can put on straight away and see the effects there and then and we'll carry this on until I've covered as much mini builds as I can possibly do and thus you can go ahead and build your own versions with the necessary information. As a heads up, I won't be using mods that are unobtainable to the masses such as Charge of Lights, Warm and Cells or Elemental World mods, that will be at a later date and through my other videos. I will be covering Titan and Warlock builds as well and I will do this on a weekly basis. I will also cover different types of builds to consider over time including Endgame, PvP, Off Meta and more. Depending on which one is done, I may also go do an in-depth version at a later date. I would also like to add in that I'm going to present this in a very basic format compared to my other videos, considering how long it would take to go in depth for each and every build available. Hopefully this doesn't take too much away in terms of information being provided. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate it if you leave a like and subscribe as it really does help me out. So the first build we'll be looking into is called the Infident Arkstrider Extended and the build involves the use of way of the current Arkstrider, Raiden Flux, and a weapon with fresh for super regeneration increasement per kill. The idea of the build is to allow you to have your super up as early as possible and then once you activate it, you can then go to town on enemies and further extend its duration thanks to the Radiant Flux Azotic ability which will also increase damage output per kill made and allow you to counter any form of attacks coming your way via the subtree Whirlwind Guard. The build is great if you're someone who likes to rely on using your super a lot and wants to be the number one choice in terms of crowd clearing but also have the option to counter back if you face a really tough and overwhelming enemy. The reason I went with military for the build is for his whirlwind guard that we can use to reflect any sort of damages coming our way, which can allow us to close the gap quicker and then extend our super after successful hits. We also have the ebb and flow sub perk that can allow us to gain our abilities back from successfully activating it via any arc based ability such as maze or grenades. Combine that with ashes to assist, distribution and bomber mod for a high focus in grenades and you can, with the combined combination of a weapon with fresh or use the bad GG exotic if you have it, can gain your super in a short amount of time. Basically your grenades and weapon will get your super up quickly and your super will allow you to go nuts from there on out. Perfect loadout for any content where you have wave based enemies. Our second build now is called the 1001 knives and as the name states you're going to be using a lot of knives in the setup that is a very fun and off meta loadout. The build would involve the use of Way of a Thousand Cuts Gunslinger for his sub perks and a gambler's dodge for gaining mini back instantly in the enemies you dodge from. You will also need to have Prometheus Lens Exotic Trace Rifle and the Orphidia Spath Exotic Chest for double melee on the go. What we have here is a subclass that can allow your knives to regenerate at an incredibly fast rate if you activate Playing With Fire and Knife Trick from the sub perks. Once you get a kill, You'll see your mini regeneration shoot up and either fully restore you or get you near enough to build it back up again. This is just relying on the exotic chest and sub tree to pull this off which is impressive for how well it can work in any scenario. At the same time this isn't the only way to get your knives fully back. If you use your gambler's dodge your dodge now will allow you to gain a full stack of melee back from dodging your enemies and upon successfully using your knives again you can then activate the burning edge sub tree perk that will regen your dodge and thus allow you to repeat the process over and over again. On top of that, adding in the Prometheus Lens to the mix can also help getting your knives back as the exotic trait for some reason also regens your knives as if you're applying burn damage. This build is one of the most funnest hunter builds that you can put together in no time 
and pretty much carry around wherever you go, as it's affecting us is really strong in low to mid level content. On top of that, once you get the main bases out of the way, you can pretty much build however you like, as you don't need to have weapons like Prometheus Lens to boost it further once you get the mods involved. Next, we have the Infinite Invisible Hunter, or Invis Ninja for short, and this build will involve a way of the Trapper, 6 Coyote, and 80 to 100 mobility. As the name states, you'll be able to go invisible a lot and pretty much back to back without the use of other weapons or mods to achieve this. It's rather simple and doesn't require a lot of explanation in terms of creating it. Just have the following three items and you can be a sneaky ninja however you like. And on top of that, this is something that you can bring everywhere, including endgame, as going invisible can be useful for extending your survivability. As the build relies on a passive ability to activate with ease, the only thing you need to worry about is getting your mobility high enough to achieve all of this. This is relatively easy as touching the mobility mod to your armor is accessible to all, and once you reach a level or satisfactory level, you can then invest elsewhere. Once you get more endgame gear, you can then expand on the area more and in charge with light or elemental world mods to further enhance the setup for more rigorous content. Down the line, you may also want to get the exotic called Ominoculus that can be a great help for you when using it in endgame or any team-based content and also works out really well with all Hunter Void Tree lines. Now all you need to do from here is add in some weapons that suit loadout and you now have a build that you can carry for a very long time into endgame. Next we have a popular community build that everyone and their mothers have used and is honestly worth the investment once you activate it. This build, which I would like to call the Golden Final Shot, involves the use of Way of the Sharp Shooter, Gunslinger, Celestial Nighthawk, and a weapon that has fresh or used bad juju exotic if you have it. The point of the build is to just build up your super for a one shot massive damage dump on any enemies you face and using this can carry you very far into end game. This is a build that doesn't require any of the mods and can passively just regen the super through natural play, which is great for carrying with you if you plan to play dungeons or raids at a later date and need some DPS options available. The subtree is the best to pick thanks to the knock em down perk which will increase your super's damage when you get a precision based kill with your main weaponry and then adding in the line em up sub tree perk that allows you to increase your damage to more and allow you to do a precision based damage which is basically gonna be another damage increasement on its own will allow you to delete any bosses you come across from body to critical shots. To enhance the super mob you could add in mods such as ashes to ashes and dynamo for increasing your super regen and then adding an intellect mod to increase your intellect stat as high as possible. Your best bet would be to use a weapon of fresh, or go and purchase the bad juju exotic, and then punch some points into your own stats. Definitely invest in this sort of build in the future if you plan to do raids or nightfall as this will be handy for dishing out large amount of damage in one go, and your team will thank you. Lastly, we have a very titan based build for the hunters that has quite a punch to it. This build will require you to use way of the warrior and activate combination blow and combat flow for a mighty one punch against enemies you decide to face. And this can put in some work against bosses if you have a weapon with trench barrel for example and just lay into them. The build used to be very overpowered in the past with one to punch, to the point that it could melt bosses in mere seconds including raid bosses who are the most tankiest bosses in game. Because of this, Bungie had to nerf how this combo went as it was too powerful. Now, one to punch isn't as strong as it used to be but still viable. Combining the subclass with the exotic slider's handshake and gambler's dodge can allow you to gain your mini back per dodge you do near enemies, and on top of that, your mini damage is getting increased, you're getting a healthy general instant, and you're pretty much one shot in everything in your way, thanks to your subclass. For this build, you don't need a specific weapon or mod to make the build work, as just the following above should be enough. This is handy as you can expand on this over time and can use it in content like raids or gambit where you have to stay on the move but also take out close range enemies as you go. If you decide to use this in endgame like Nightfall, then it can also be effective but only to a degree if you can manage to get the drop onto an enemy. I highly recommend you use this in Gambit though, as you can wipe out waves of enemies via just your melee alone, and nothing can pretty much stop you unless overwhelming forces. Builds are a prime example of endgame content that players can fully delve into and create some crazy builds to mess around with. And I believe at heart that every player should have the option to build whatever they like, no matter what level they are at. Thanks to Destiny's constant growth, many players will have the resources available to craft and mix items to their liking, and experiment with combos that could be a sleeper hit in the right environment. Do tell me if this has been useful, or if there are things you would like me to expand on, as I'm happy to cover this down the line. 
So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 content if you do that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one.